come on, y'all got a lot of stuff, but y'all have to bring your stuff and come with me. <laughs> so this is our family waiting area, obviously, that continues around to, to the right there. Currently, our family waiting space is about the size of this square from this desk out. So this is a significant improvement for our visitors um, who are here with their, their families. Um, sometimes mom and dad just want some personal time with the baby. So once the COVID visitation is lifted, um, grandparents or other family members can wait out in this space if they're not in the room with their, um, with their loved ones. So come on through. Um, so when visitors come, they'll be buzzed in here by the secretary. We do require that all visitors to the NICU do a three minute scrub. So this is our scrub area. We will have timers in place to ensure that they complete the full three minute scrub. Just inside there is where the secretary sits. She kind of watches, oversees this area to see if they have any issues or if there's anything that we need to do, especially moms that are pretty newly postpartum. We would hate for them to have some type of event and nobody witnessed that. So she kind of oversees this area to help with that. So once they're done scrubbing in, they will come through this door. And they will be directed to either the intensive care side of the nursery, which is where we're going, or the intermediate side. We'll come out that way. So similar to what you saw on the fourth floor probably is the um, pass-through nurses station. We have a similar uh, format here for our um, for ease of access. So in our current NICU, all the babies, all the moms, all the monitors, everything is in one large room. This obviously with putting babies in single patient rooms um, creates some of, somewhat of a visibility challenge. So having this pass-through nurses station allows for the nurses to know if somebody needs help on the other side. Um, developmentally, this is a better environment for the babies. Um, it's quieter, it's darker. Um, right now, even though we try to talk softly in the NICU, it can be a very loud space for our babies. So developmentally, being in a single patient room is um, more appropriate for them. So we have a room set up over on the other side and I'll keep walking and talking while we're going. So we are the regional referral center for the PD region. So any baby that's born in the PD, um, any of the eight counties that we serve, we are responsible for their care. Um, today we are licensed for 48 babies. Um, once we move into the space, we'll still be licensed for 48 patients. However, today we do have somewhat of a space challenge. If we had to put 48 babies in the NICU today, we don't really have the space for that. This space is intensive, like I mentioned. There's 24 beds on this side, there's 26 on the other. So we actually have two extra rooms above our license. So nice. that hopefully babies that are born in this region will be able to stay in this region. Currently, if we have 43 babies or so, whatever our max is, if another baby is born, even if that baby's born here at McLeod Regional, we're not able to keep that baby. We have to stabilize it and transport it out to Charleston, Columbia, Greenville, or Spartanburg. For if they need level three care. So this is this will be a huge satisfier for families that they'll get to stay in this area. This is a typical NICU setup. So this baby is in a giraffe isolate. We have a little baby here for you to see. Um, so the ventilator and the respiratory support is on this side where our respiratory therapist will work from. Um, I don't know what all you need to get to there. Um, and then the nurses will work from the opposite side. So both caregivers can be in the bed at the same time if they need, need to. This bed does open so that if there's an emergency situation, the physician, the nurse, the respiratory therapist, whoever needs to get into this bed to resolve that issue can get in there. 